and Lewin. That would, that, that would work you can out. Be whatever you want to be, Nick. My, so, mom, my mom says to call her mommy, mommy. If I have to call, if they call me Louie, Louie. This, but you yeah. can just call me Louie. And you know, I nearly wore that same outfit. Did I'm just you? so glad yeah. it was like that. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Well, we're excited. And I look, I wore my uh, little that bow earring is unbelievable. This I haven't is seen my that my rock and roll look. Uh, Bone through the earlobe. Yeah, it's and you. You've just got the holes there. Yeah, ready I just to had go. holes. I used to wear four, but I went a little conservative. So we want to know a little bit about you because you've just taken this town by storm. I mean, I have a show in town and you hear things and people who have been to see your show do not believe it. They have to go back the next day to see that you really, uh, I, and it must be an energy thing. Everybody has commented that your show just has an energy and a drive that uh, takes it way beyond anything else like it. Yeah, everybody talks about the energy. I think it's because it's a momentum. I feel like the whole show, it starts to lift and I don't like dead air. I always keep everything mm -hmm. going. There's Everything is just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. And of course, this is at the Las Vegas Hilton. Yeah, in the yeah, nightclub. How long have you been in town? Been there about four months, and it's been the most incredible four months. Just zip, 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 zip. You like the Vegas crowd? Love it here. Responding yeah. well? Yeah, because I'm, I'm from L.A., and I moved, I just totally moved out here, and I'm just, this is my home now in Vegas. Do you miss L.A. at all? Not at all. A little bit. Now, in the, that was where you started, the clubs. Exactly. Uh, what were the big clubs? I'm guessing the Roxy. Yeah, the Roxy, the, the Viper, Whiskey, a Go-Go. Wall Street, when that was there. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, that's when we wrote a song about a bag lady on the first album called Penny Lady. She lived right in front. All the clubs, because in L.A. there's a scene. You could literally go to the clubs and get discovered there if you got a, got a show. We were playing in the midst of rock and roll bands. Right. You know, because there's a big rock and roll scene in L.A. Not a big R&B, hip-hop thing, but we just did our thing. Because it's an R&B, hip-hop kind of show, but it, we use the energy of a rock and roll concert to inject it with it. You know, we should show a little bit of footage. We have a clip from Press to Play. Press Play, you know, yeah. absolutely. Uh, press Play! That's, now they have to press it to play, which they're going to do right over here. Let's watch a little bit of this from the new uh, CD. There's no juice living life within the confines. I rather live on the edge and draw the crooked jagged line. Can't stand still, I can't stay in one place. Huh? Need to put my point of view in everybody else's face. Don't mean to offend you, you might have I breathe from your air. Huh? It's not the life is cruel, seems the life at times is just not fair. Great stuff. That's Little terrific. sampling of Louie Louie. Yes. That, Hot stuff. No wonder they're getting excited with us. Now, let's go back to when it started for you, because when uh, did you start as, uh, in music, or was uh, that something that came a little bit later on with I've, you? I've been songwriting since I was a kid. My mm -hmm. parents used to find my songs. Like, What's wrong with you? Because I, I pretty much documented everything in my life. That's what the songs are. And like on the Press Play album, I decided to... Because on the first couple albums, they were pop. And this, I decided to go R&B, hip-hop, because that's what I felt inside, like a soul. Mm -hmm. soul singing and it was this song called lonely won't stay out of my life and i started singing sudden, sudden, suddenly different i lowered the keys to the song i was singing and i the riffing like there's a in the song i'm doing this and the pain and everything i turned into melody and and that's what it is and that's why i found myself on this album press play that's really neat and that was like something deep within you that came out as totally. you started now this is what your fourth cd e one two three yeah. Four, all right. Number That's four. good. Time flies. Oh, yeah. and, and what now? Other things that you were in a, in a Madonna video? Yeah, that's how it started. Borderline? After, after the songwriting, I went straight into acting, and I got the Borderline video. I also did that movie, House Party 2. Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was music that I wanted to do, because me and Madonna were going out for a while. And I was with her with the beginning of her whole career. I watched her take off to the Like a Virgin, to all the states. She always knew how big she was going to be. You know what I'm saying? But I knew from that moment on that I just wanted to do music. Did That's you, what I feel. Did you learn something from her with that? She always seems to me to have that single-minded attention to what she wants to happen and making it happen by the sheer Absolutely. energy. D did you learn something from her within that? It's an intensity that almost anybody that's worked with that has been, you know, has done it, really accomplished something. Her intensity was amazing. The second album I worked with, George Michael and Prince, their intensity, it's their intensity and their focus on their stuff. It's just so just like, ugh. So I've been around, even on the first record I worked with, Dizzy Gillespie. I've been blessed. Dizzy Gillespie? Dizzy, Dizzy Gillespie played wow. the trumpet on, on uh, Sitting in the Lap of Luxury. Yeah, I Gillespie. didn't know that. It was That's amazing. great. Was we had a sample trumpet on, and I said, you know what? I was being sarcastic. I go, if you're going to put a trumpet on a record, might as well get Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> the next day, they had Dizzy Gillespie was in the studio. Oh, oh that was tremendous. Best, right? It was unbelievable. Did you have influences like him? Yeah, growing up. I, see, I, he played on Stevie Wonder's record, that Do I Do. Do I Do. 
And I love Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder was, when I was younger, since I was nine years old, I used to do imitations of Stevie Wonder, Sonny and Cher, so, uh, wait, Helen Reddy. Wait, wait, Give wait. Us some. Stop right there. Yeah. Sonny and Sonny Cher. Sonny and Cher. Now, the others are in the... Were, were you a Sonny and Cher fan? Yeah. I liked the, the show when I was a little kid. I used to watch the variety show because mm -hmm. I used to like the way they poked fun at each other. Because my parents, they got divorced when I was younger, but they always would uh, poke fun at each other, almost like Sonny and Cher, you know, make fun of the whatever it was. It was. I, do you still do a little imitation? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I do it in the show. Um, I was, I was born in a wagon of a traveling show. My mama had to dance for the money they throw. Papa would do whatever he could. But I mix it up. Oh. I do, I do, I got you, babe, in the show. It, it's funny. Oh, I'm also starting, I'm adding, as of tonight, I put Mick Jagger back in the show. Oh, really? I do a Mick Jagger. I, you can't always get what you, you want. You do a fabulous Mick Jagger. Uh, I'll bet he'd like to do that good a Mick Jagger at this funny. point in the game. You know, we have another clip, too, which yes. is uh, from the new CD. This, this is, is Lonely, Lonely Wolf's Dead of My Life. Lonely. That was Lonely Won't Stay Out of My Life. Now, that's a whole different kind of a thing there. Yeah. That was the thing that made me... That's when I started believing in myself as an R&B singer, because you could believe yourself as a singer and this and that, but if you're not black and you're trying to sing R&B, I was more intimidated. And the uh, friends of mine that I met in, in Florida, they were saying, no, no, if that's what you feel, if you feel soul, then do it. Because it's harder in the industry if they, want, they try to pigeonhole you. Because well, I have a lot of Latin influences, too, you know, like Tito Puente and Celia Cruz. And in live, we have two percussionists. But that's not the music that I feel like always doing. It makes me feel alive, but I feel soul. So people will always think I'm going to be like, dun, 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 which you get that kind of stuff. But that's more, I use that as salt and pepper in my music. That's a uh, Tito Puente, one of my favorite oh. concerts in town here. It was at the Sahara recently. And uh, what a performer. My God. Unbelievable. The, the sonic sound of that band, the excitement level. So you have some great influences. Now, did I read Helen Reddy? Helen Reddy also. Now, now, now I've got That's to talk about that one. You've just got some amazing... What was it? Because it was a real emotional honesty with her. Was that part of what yeah, it was? Yeah, she sang different kind of songs like Angie Baby. You know, the Angie Baby. And when I was younger, you know, my voice was, you know, higher, so I could do those kind of imitations too. So I was like, I was like the family entertainer at the, at the picnics and stuff like that. Oh, Louie, come here. <laughs> sing for us. Do this, do that. And that was the only way I could sing is... It's in the beginning, like I use imitation to the bridge to find myself. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have to, you do it by, you imitate other people and you, it's something different about it when you start doing yourself. But it took me four albums to actually nail in my own style musically and vocally. And lonely is part of that. That's, that's, that's a side of you coming out. And it's, it's just beautiful. It's and a whole, and do you get a little bit of a feeling? Do people give you a hard time with that, say you can't sing R&B? Right. I'm in the surprised beginning, to yeah. hear that. Oh, totally. Because really? you're supposed to stick with what you do. Every time someone finds me, they always say, oh, you got to do, you're the next Ricky Ricardo or you're the next Latin this or someone sees me. I mean, in the same, you can go in one minute, someone will say, oh, you're a Latin prince. The next person will say, you're like George Michael or you're John Cicada. And like, I know you have to identify someone with somebody, but nothing is ever done intentionally. And you've got all those things running through your work because you really are absolutely impossible to classify, yeah, having just ha seen a, a sampling of what you do. So, so what, what are the things that you think of next? Uh, what are the things you haven't even dared put down yet on mm. CD or sound? Is there something there waiting to happen? Yeah, there's some new stuff. It's going to start next week. The, a friend of mine, Star, flying back from Florida. Next week we go in. We wrote the Press Play album. Within six days we did five songs, wow. nonstop. And they all came. It had to have been something from God of Flow. So he's wow. coming this time for three weeks. We're going to finish the record. And you That's try a lot correct. of new things out in your show? Totally. Well, right. we've got to take a break. We're going to be back. We're talking with Louie Louie. We'll be right back with more Entertainment Files. Welcome back to the Entertainment Files. We're talking with music sensation Louie Louie. Yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Right. 
rush of energy. This is, thank you for joining us, guys. This thank is you, terrific. So this gives us a little bit of an authentic feel yes. for how it really is down there in the hill. Yeah, what we do is whatever song's going on, we add a little bit of, yeah. a little of this, a little of that, just take it, make it hype. That's these great. guys have been with me like 12 years, too. 12 years. Can we get From a the couple beginning. And you know, these here? are so good, yeah. too, because taxi drivers have these on the back <laughs> oh my of their taxi. <laughs> Looks like yeah, you can always use it as a, oh, a yeah. back roller. We, <laughs> we want to meet the guys. Yeah, a little, little introduction here. Okay, first of all, we got Gino G. Hi, Gino. Hey, Gino. And this is Sam Maserani. Hey, hey Sam. All right. right. Better known as Sam Bam. Sam Bam, yeah. I know that from that yeah. introduction. You 12 years. Yeah. Okay, so is he fun to work for? Why Very not? Fun. 12 years. He into works you hard though, doesn't he? Oh yeah. 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 It's it's fun though. These guys, I mean, it's funny cuz I used to go by the, by him sometimes and you could smell like Ben Gay or Bengal rub because he's working so hard. <laughs> They're like braces and putting the yeah. heat stuff on. It's just Brutal. It's amazing how often musicians smell of that kind of a band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't know about that. But now this whole percussion thing, whoa, it's very cool. Now, do you apply this to other kinds of music? That obviously had a nice uh, Everything. Latin-y feel to it. But you add that to the rock and roll sound, too. To the rock and roll, hip-hop. Even yeah. when we do the Stones or Stevie Wonder, he plays m m mainly the sticks and these new thing called uh, virtual v -drums. drums, V drums. Oh, what are V Tell drums? About it. It's... Uh, brand new on the market, it's like on the cutting edge, and they're like triggers, but you, wow, it's really hard to get into without having uh, It's the 21st ear. century of yeah. drums. Yeah. Wow. The sounds, yeah. you, you have to the, see it. like 30, 40 kits. He plays most of the traditional old bongos, school. congas, old school, uh -huh. old school, old school stuff. Old school, yeah. So we're blending in the R&B, the hip hop, the funk, with kind of like a, wow. a Latin jazzy kind of thing. And people haven't heard much of this, I'm guessing, no. in Vegas. You haven't, uh, it's the, it's, that's part of the thing. It's the, the presentation of the show. It's a little different. Plus, we have three background singers and two hip-hop dancers. Wow. Uh, that's a whole show. Yeah. That's a, that's a spec. You, were you familiar with uh, Esquivel? Escaval. Uh, Juan uh, Escaval. He was back here in the 60s. He was a tremendous uh, band leader. He had a 40 piece band. Oh, really? He used to change costumes 40 times. Wow. His music was profoundly cutting edge for that time. Wow. It had a lot of the excitement that you have. I'm this is to like check a new. Out. Yeah, you'll find it interesting. What do you think of the music today? Do you think it's any good? <clears throat> what, the only thing that bothers me is that everybody keeps going back and rehashing stuff that was already there. Yeah. And on the new album, and what we do, we ne we don't take anything. We don't sample any old music. We try to create. We try to use a, a kick and a snare that no one's used, and a pattern. And it's really hard, because we're hard on each other. We go, oh no, we've heard that before. Oh no, that's been done. Oh, here's something fresh. If it if it jumps out and makes us takes us to another end. And so now the industry needs some innovation, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. we need some innovation. It needs innovation. to reinvent itself all the time. Yeah. To be there. Now, how does it work for you guys? Do you come up when you decide to do an album? Do you basically write the uh, the melodies or the, the the lyrics, and then everyone joins in on that whole rhythm thing? Yeah, exactly. I'm you, I'm mainly a lyricist and a melody writer, even though I do tracks too. But we combine it. Like he he's incredible lyric and melody writer. He's great editor and lyric writer. Mm -hmm. We can you can bring a song to Sam and he'll go, oh, I hate it. Or try this, or flip. He'll tell you something you didn't even think about doing. Yeah. And he plays guitar also. He plays harmonica. Everybody's jumping on different instruments. But it's the way their their personalities in the show. They're what bring the energy to the every other level. This I guy's jumping tell. around like he's on a trampoline. This guy's <laughs> going nuts. It looks like he's jumping out the window of the hotel <laughs> here. I don't know about that. Oh, we better not do any trampoline on that. I just love the bongos. And you you look. There's just a little bit of that old coffee house uh, beating it cool there. You got oh, yeah, the shades yeah, yeah. on the. Yeah, yeah, give us a little bit right. of that bongo sound. You do. Do jazz poetry. To Show me how you do some of them slapping. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Real dynamic player. Let's go. <laughs> that is great. great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know that that's a good one. That's that boxing thing going yeah. there. Yeah. Wham, that wham. Down. Wow, and this and uh, bongos, you don't see them around that often anymore. I've yeah. never seen anyone sitting actually playing, actually, are, making those kind of sounds. These are my, uh, my vintage ones. These go back from the 60s, yeah. Really? Yeah. He's amazing. They could both play. He could play a table on sticks, and he could play that computer screen and make it sound good. Did you ever have to do that? Uh, did you ever find that you're... Oh, no, you probably carry these with you on the plane when you were really no, on the remember road. remember that time we, we were loading in and all the equipment got stuck in the elevator. Mm -hmm. So these guys, oh. these guys had to improvise. <laughs> I had like a little set of wood blocks. That was, yeah. that was it. That and a little splash. <laughs> That's all I was playing. And, and, did oh. that, and that worked for you. I'm willing yeah. to oh. bet. It's, what uh, are you thinking of it? Everything <laughs> was stuck on an elevator. 
Now, <laughs> did you start? Or were, you, were you like uh, a tin drum set? Uh, you know, when, when you were when you started? Younger? Yeah, uh, when you were. No, can I can I say something about him? This guy, he started off playing a uh, piece of wood. Piece of wood. <laughs> It was just a piece of wood. He would slap, slap. Really? Yeah, it was a tree stump, actually. Yeah, tree stump. It, it, it blew down on a, on a heavy, windy day. And <laughs> the, city, the city came oh, in. This they, is great. The city came in. They started chopping like chunks, and I was like, going, "Wow, look at that! I could probably use that." Because I didn't have the money to buy any, any congs or anything like that, so I got this uh, wood stump here, and I just started playing. Innovation. <laughs> That's right. I used to do those tins, the biscuit tins back in England. I'd have Biscuits. different ones, and you know, I was there. I was Ginger Baker. I was everything <laughs> rolled into one on that stuff yeah. through. Do we have a good nightclub scene here in Vegas? You're getting good crowds? Yes. You've got it, really. Yeah. Yeah. You're right the nightclub you scene is great because every nightclub has a different kind of scene. The thing I like about the Hilton, it's kind of like a... It's a fun, classy place. You can go there. There's no really dress code, but most of the people dress, you know, kind of dress up. But you could go take somebody special and just have a good time. You could just have to free for all. That's right. Now, when, when do you, how often do you play there? Well, give everyone an we idea. We play. It should. It should be. We should just call the show Late Night with Louie Louie because we probably have one of the latest shows in Vegas. On on Friday and Saturday, we do it at one o'clock in the morning and two forty-five, mm -hmm. and people are going. I can't believe I stayed up this late in my life. You know what I mean? But till four in the morning, it is packed there. And on, on Thursdays, we go on at 9 and 11 for the early birds. And on Sundays, we go on at 11 and 1. All right. And then we get great. three days off. Well, well, that, you must that. need we it. We need that late. Yeah. Late we scene. love it. Oh. It used to be a much more of a late night city. And that I side know, of it surprised. has really faded a great deal. So it's wonderful when you get an energy coming back in that really keeps people up. Exactly. Front. And the second set on Friday and Sunday, I love because a lot of the show kids come around. You get people from, from Follies and Mystere. And everybody just comes in and, and sees yeah. the show splash. And... It's just loaded. The audience is loaded with it's entertainment. Great. You know, we, how about a little more of that uh, rhythm music thing going on there? We're going to take a break. Give it moment. to me. We're going to make two, you come three. back. Well, let's have a little more. Oh, I love this. Welcome back to the Entertainment Files. Well, you can see the answer was Elton John. He performed Pinball Wizard in the movie Tommy. And you know, we do with every guest, Louie Louie, and we're going to do it with you. We ask every guest, if you were stranded on a desert island and could only bring five movies, what would they be? And we like to hear guilty pleasures. Those movies you really don't want to say on the air, but we're going to get them out of you anyway. Guilty pleasures. They're our favorites, the <laughs> yes. guilty pleasures. Yeah, my, my favorite five movies, gosh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh. Ooh. Grease, the first one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Powder, that was a movie that came out. A few it was years ama ago, oh, yeah, yes. amazing movie. I like all the James Bond. We do too. Oh, and, you have to uh, tell us your favorite James it's, Bond. It's Bond. We live for James Bond movies. That's, God, they're all so good though. Maybe uh -huh. uh, to live and let die, or the one with Grace Jones. Because yes. I love Grace Jones. Oh, the Roger Moore one. She's amazing. Yes. she's amazing. And uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, the black and white version from the from the. I think 1940. Who was in that? Was that Jose Ferrer? Jose Ferrer. The thing about that movie, it was weird, because I, I, one time I sent Prince some lyrics, and he goes, you think you're deep? you got to rent Cyrano de Bergerac. I never even heard of that the thing. So I rented it, the black and white version, and it's about, the stories are about a guy with this, you know, this incredibly big nose, and he, he, may, he turns it around. His big nose is, he celebrates it in his life. And to me, sometimes when you have a, 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 a what you would think is something that would, a handicap or something, that's more your trophy in life. It gives you character. And that's what I love the moral of that movie. Oh, that's beautifully oh. put. Very, very, very true. And those were all good picks. Do you have a favorite Great number picks. from the Rocky Horror Picture Show? When Tim Curry just first comes out and he's saying, how'd you do? I see you've met my, you know, that, that thing. You're that just was like, great, yeah. His performance is, is sick. No. Even it's so campy, it's ridiculous. It's, well, now, did you go to the late night uh, in L.A.? Oh, I must have seen those it. Late in night L.A., shows. they do that as a kid. You see, you know, yeah, I must have right. seen it 50, 60 times. But the best is when I finally got it on video, and you can hear it on your speakers at home. Oh, the, the, the right. soundtrack is amazing. But do you miss it having is. the rice thrown on you and the yeah, toast? Yeah, and the and, toilet paper yeah. and the toast and getting uh -huh. wet. And, oh. Absolutely. It's an experience. Well, I've, I got a video <laughs> pic. Uh, and it's it's an English rock and roll movie. It's called Absolute Beginners by oh, Julian yes. Temple, the, the great video David director. David Bowie in that one too. David Bowie, Patsy Kensett, uh, uh, James Fox. A fabulous movie. It captures that whole era of when I was really growing up, and uh, I think it was rather overlooked. Set in London yeah. about uh, late fifties. Well, that's it? right, in the uh, the Soho area of London. Well, you know, I've got a great pick, and it's recently on video. It's called Monterey Pop. 
and it was really one of the first great rock music concert films, and it featured Janis Joplin and Otis Redding and Ooh. Jimi Hendrix and The Who, and everybody was in it. And the amazing thing is it was recently released on video with 10 minutes of never-before-seen footage. So if you haven't seen it in a while, see it again, because it was one of the first great ones, and it was from the great rock documentarian. Uh, D.A. Pennebaker, who also did, I know, a movie you're quite fond of, oh, Don't yes. Look Back. Don't Look Back, about the Bob, Bob Dylan Dylan's. movie. He also did Eat the Document, which was the totally lost Bob Dylan movie. They did the same thing the year later, and it's impossible to find. How would you like to have someone going around on the road with you, uh, really detailing what was going on? Would I think that it, scare you? In a, in a sense, it scare you, but you, you kind of need to be documented, because I, I watch the old Rolling Stones documentaries and Who's, and they're so amazing. I think that's my next step, is I'll probably write a musical. I have one in the works called Alter Boy that I'm working on, but... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That would put all those elements back into one actual... Uh, right. What did uh, you think, I basis. hope you don't mind me asking, but what did you think of the Madonna Truth or Dare? Was that an accurate reflection following yeah. her around, her personality? Totally. Was that how she really interacted with dancers? Because that's one thing about Madonna. I met a lot of people. She's what you see. A lot of artists, mm -hmm. they put on this put-on thing that they're not really that person. Madonna is as wonderful, as incredible, and as sometimes... Uh, as just you as you what? see her. As are you. You are wonderfully incredible and oh, very talented. It's been our Thanks, pleasure. It was, it was Make incredible. sure you catch Louie Louie at the Hilton. Thank you for joining us on the show. We'll be back next week. More entertainment files.